Hey, welcome to today's video. So uh, as of today, it's October 16th and uh, Halloween is right around the corner. So I felt like maybe I should do a uh, fun little character for, um, you know, something for Halloween, like a Halloween theme. So why don't we make a cartoon uh, witch, like a stylized witch? How would you go about making a witch in ZBrush, right? Because you could take it really complex. It could just be something super detailed or super stylized, simple and fun. So I'm not uh, really sure. I kind of want to aim for something in the middle, right? Between super simple and super complex. So to get started, um, maybe in this video, let's just at least create a uh, head of the character. So to get started, I'm going to go to Lightbox. And there's a few different ways uh, you can start. Um, if you are new to ZBrush, you can start with the sphere or ZBrush does give you a few um, pre-made options in the projects that are a great starting point. One of them is like the head plane. The head plane is nice because you already have the cavity for, you know, like the, the, uh, the eyes, you have the nose placing, the ears, and then you can just, you know, go from there, right? So that's a great place to start. And the other one, obviously, is you can use the demo head if you want to stay closer to something that's uh, more realistic. Um, in our case, let's just, just for fun, uh, let's just see if we can grab a head plane. And uh, it doesn't really matter which one I use. I'll just use this female 128. And let's just use that, right? So let's say this is our uh, starting point, okay? Um, the first thing I want to do right away is it's currently in Dynamesh, right? Which is great, but I want to get rid of a lot of these super blocky lines. Um, I don't really need those. How do I get rid of them very quickly? Well, of course I can try to polish it, right? That's one way of doing it. Holding down the shift key, you can try to smooth it out. Um, what would be another way? Is there a faster way to turn this into more of a smooth blob versus kind of a, you know, liney, liney blob? Um, well, there is, right? All we need to do is just turn it into, let's Z-remesh this. I'm going to go to geometry and uh, I'm going to turn this super low, like 0.5, right? Like really, really low, adapt off. And I'm just going to leave the symmetry on, active symmetry is on. I'm just going to do a Z-remesh. And that should get rid of these lines um, for me automatically and it does right so now you can see what that looks like all right now if i hold on the shift key you can see that i have very easy time smoothing out anything that is super sharp and maybe for what i'm doing this is going to be a little bit better right so i'm going to go with this if you hold on the shift key and you feel like the uh, smoothness is a little too strong while holding on the shift key you can of course adjust the uh, intensity, right? Not not the RGB one, but the um, add right here, right? This is going to control your uh, smoothing intensity. So keep that in mind, right? And that's maybe it's going to be a little more gradual. Okay. So that was a cool little trick to convert the base mesh into something that's a little bit different, right? Now to get started, uh, um, you know, I'm thinking like the basic old lady cartoon face. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my move. And the first thing I need to do right away is, um, because this is going to be a cartoon character, I want um, very exaggerated features. And for that, I want the neck to be skinny. And that is going to be kind of the way I'm going to go with the old lady. Of course, you can experiment uh, on your end and see what you like. Um, I'm going to go with something like this. And let's talk about the basics, right? So if you are thinking about some kind of a ugly witch, right? I think right right away you're going to say that the chin should probably be, you know, classic witch, right? Forward like this. And you got uh, a nose that is somewhat big. And usually, you know, you can do a nose like this, you know, this way. Or we can go the other way and make it uh, just really cartoony and a little more friendly, like a potato almost. So maybe we'll do something like that. This right here already starts to look a little more witchy. I can always do control D if I want a little more um, resolution, right? I could do that. And that is going to be, I think, 
pretty good base mesh for what I need. I can push these eyes in a little more. We can decide if the witch is going to be mean, you know, like this. Or, you know, maybe it's kind of a kind witch. Maybe she's, you know, if the, uh, if the brow is usually up, then she's open, right? She's more kind emotionally versus uh, mean. So we can decide what we want. Uh, it's up to you. As far as the ears go, again, now think of this as just literally just blocking out the base mesh, right? That's uh, what we're doing here. The ears could probably be a little bit larger and cartoony and kind of bubbly. Uh, that's what I'm visualizing for my character. And a lot of times as you start sculpting this stuff and you're concepting, your uh, art style will emerge. And uh, that's pretty much a really cool reason to um, try to do things without too much reference because then you can rely on deciding things that you normally wouldn't see somewhere else and then you know uh, your own art style starts to kind of emerge so for me usually it's i don't know why that is but it's just super cartoony large exaggerated shapes is what i like uh, personally as an artist so like even if i go more realistic i like stuff that is super chunky like the overwatch um, game right I, I, I like things that are very um, exaggerated all right so let's say I'm happy with this how would I move to uh, step two or um, like level two right so the next step would be to give us a lot more uh, resolution so to, to get rid of this facety look again I don't really want this to be so grid like I want to start adding more um, kind of a fine detail right carving in the mouth and just adding nostrils so I need a little more than just what I have here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press ctrl D a bunch of times until I see that the surface is smooth okay and then once I see that it's smooth I'm going to delete lower and I can stay in this mode here and start sculpting on this or I can also of course go back into Dynamesh mode and as I say in my videos I, I think of Dynamesh as like a clay mode so for that maybe let me do that i'm going to go to 256 and do um, dynamesh and you can see when i turn this into a dynamesh even if i do control and drag and re-dynamesh you can see that the surface still st st um, is staying really smooth and it doesn't look too you know facety right and we're only at 234,000 points so this is a great start for like a level two sculpting uh, once you get your super basic base mesh in and now uh, with this uh, you can start slowly start building um, some more details right so let's say I start from the ear so I personally like to use clay buildup and if I switch to something like the alpha one with the buildup um, I can start building literally sketching right like like you're sketching on 3d um, something that would look like a cartoon ear, right? So we know that we're gonna need this here, this line here. And when I do ears, usually cartoon ears, first I'll do the uh, the outside part, all of this here. And then uh, usually, obviously, if you hold on the old key, you can push this in, right? And uh, if you start doing this and it kind of stops, you can press one to kind of double up. Let's do control and drag to redynamesh. And now once we got this going, another thing that you could do as a cartoon ear, just add another line in there like this. And that's gonna just add a little more detail without adding too much complexity. Uh, you know, there's a million ways to do cartoon ears, but this is a good way. Holding down the old key, you can smooth this out. And right away, right away, it looks, you know, somewhat interesting, right? Um, another thing that would make it look a little better, maybe, is if we just change the shape of it. Um, you know, usually you have something like this, where it's a little more round, and then it gets a little more um, shapey or wavy down here, right? Again, uh, just artistic preference, but you can smooth this out so it's not so strong. And I think even like that is a good cartoon kind of a cartoon ear right um we can worry about adding this little thing that you have you, you can decide if you want to do that or not all right so uh next let's say the ear is good 
Um, and next, let's do the nose. So to do the nose, I could do same thing. I'll just grab my build up. I'm in active symmetry still. And I can just start building something that look like a nostril right here. So using the build up, we can start building this up. And, you know, I can also, of course, change the intensity. Do something like this. And let me just start building like a round nostril, right? And maybe, you know, uh, we can decide, let's inflate maybe the end of the nose. I'm thinking of this being a little more like super cartoony and kind of, again, like a potato almost. Uh, so I like that. Let's do control and drag, smooth this out, go back to uh, build up and just continue building it. If you, you could do a couple things that I like to do. I could use, you could use clay build up. That's one way of doing it. And another way is just using inflate brush. I like to sculpt with inflate brush cartoon characters a lot as well. Um, inflate is great because that will just give you, uh, let me just put this on like 30 and 30 is too much. Let's do like 15 or yeah, let's do 15. And this is great too, right? Very quickly, you can see how you can raise surfaces up and almost draw with it just like you do with clay buildup. So I like to use both of them. Holding on the old key, I can press this in. Uh, Redynamash, smooth. And right now this nostril feels like it's way too low. So I can maybe move all of this up here. Let's pu push this, uh, pull this up or push this up, I guess. And for the shape of the nose, I wouldn't mind this to be a little more round, right? So you see what I'm doing? I'm creating um, like a volume using any one of these brushes, doesn't really matter. And then use the move brush to get it into the shape that I like, right? So that's an, that's an important understanding for a newsy brush, uh, like an artist, right? You, you could create the volume and fill it up with stuff, but then you want to use the move brush. Think of move brushes as like literally using your fingers with clay, right? You're just molding it into something that you like. And we can decide, you know, how far we want to take this. Maybe I want to make this super exaggerated as well. And for a mouth, I'm not seeing her having like teeth or anything like that. Let me just do like a Damien standard. And, you know, maybe she has like a little bit of a smile going on. So if we do a smile, um, let me go into a sub mode. So I'm going to use Damien standard to press this kind of line in, right? Something like this. And then if we have a smile, right, if she's smiling, this cheek is going to be puffy, right? Which means I'm going to grab the inflate and I can literally just go from the nose all the way to like this area here and just inflate this a little more, right? And if it starts to look, uh, you know, starts to get blobby, just do control and drag to redynamesh and just smooth this out. And you can always change the uh, intensity because I, I do want to do it very gradually. For this here, right, if it's an old lady, um, we can puff this up a little more here as well. The cheek is probably going to be pressed in, right? And then uh, right here, we can build this coming from like the jawline. So maybe coming right here, we want to have that strong jawline and then going into the chin. And then the chin right here could be a little bubbly, right? Like, so you have this indentation right above the chin. And that's going to be uh, pretty cool. And then later, we can also use the um, pinch to pinch this into more of a sharp look. So I'm going to control and drag. Let's move this out and let me just show you what I mean. So like if I wanted to grab the pinch and start pinching this right here, very quickly I can create something that is very clean and very nice looking, right? Like this, drag, redynamesh. So it's a really nice um, contrast between something that's blobby and soft with really sharp lines. Right, just a stylized, kind of a stylized look. And very slowly, it's starting to look more and more like a, some kind of a witch. Uh, very cool, let's do a little more, right? I'm gonna do Damien Standard. And for these cheeks, I really wanna push them back. 
you know so like she's smiling again and then i want to go from here towards here to do like a actual lips so all of that here is what i want and i'm, I'm not liking the fact that this is starting to go up uh, my topology is a little messed up here but i can move this down a little and i kind of want this line to be somewhat uh you know straight like i don't want any wobbles in here so let me just redynamic smooth this and you can see what i'm doing right this line is kind of nice and uh straight so like this i can do this and then i can press one to double up and let me just keep playing with this something like that is pretty cool um let's think about this line here being back more right she's really smiling maybe she's flying on her broom she just got a brand new broom from costco and she's testing it out and uh she's you know she's happy she's in good mood all right and then i like that and then let's see what else can we do let's do damien standard and now to add a little more lines like aging we can add some lines you can of course pull up some references of like an older person but Essentially, I just want to add some lines here and I really want to emphasize this nostril. I don't want to lose this shape here. So I'm going to do that. Press one to uh, double up on that or just one time. I think is good. And we can decide if we need to increase the resolution. I think we're still OK for now. Actually, if I wanted to, I can maybe push this a little more. And you know what? Let me add my intensity a little stronger for my Damien standard here. So something like this. I really want to see this line here, right? So I'm being very choosy, right? I'm just carefully choosing which lines I think should be more pronounced. And uh, I think that totally works. Now for the eyes, uh, let me just grab the inflate. And essentially I can insert a couple of spheres here. But uh, I first want to create kind of an indentation for eye socket. So I'm holding down the old key uh, in inflate. I'm holding on the old key so I can switch to sub, right? It's just, it's reversing it. But I can start kind of pushing this in and start creating something that I think would works for eyes. I'm going to kind of make them closer together. Okay. And let's do control and drag. And I think something like that is pretty perfect. Now I could insert the spheres and start building eyelids, right? That's uh, that's something we can do. And let's maybe go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to Subtool, do Insert Sphere. Grab my uh, move. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. And uh, just figure out what is the size of the eyes, right? Um, you can always turn on the uh, transparent mode if that helps you. You can see what is the actual size that makes sense. So that's an option. And then let's just put it into position and decide um, what makes sense. So I think something along these lines works. I like this. Okay. Now I'm going to... Uh, let's decide if we want to... Um, do we want to mirror this and mirror and weld? So we have two of them. I think so. Why not? Let's just build two at the same time. So I'm going to go back into my head layer, go back into my draw mode. And let's just decide if I want to inflate or keep using build up. Doesn't really matter. But um, I'm going to start building kind of these bottom eyelids here. And so this, this eyelid here is important, right? And I'm starting to feel like I, I need more geometry. So very, very soon I'm going to switch, I think, to 512. And then I do want to build this here. This is going to be my uh, top, you know, top eyelid. So this is important here, right? Let's do control and drag. I'm going to switch this to inflate and just inflate this a little more. And just keep adding more and more volume, right? Um, for this here, I wouldn't mind starting uh, putting in some wrinkles. So we'll, maybe we'll do three and we can smooth this out and let's do control and drag. All right. And now uh, for the actual, so like this is the 
um, think of this as like the actual head, right? They're not actual eyelids. And now we need uh, eyelids that are a little closer to the actual eyeball. So to get, uh, to, uh, get those going, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this going. Let's do this, let's duplicate this. So now we have two of them, right? Two layers. And uh, I'm gonna press shift and click to just reveal these. And uh, I would like to reduce their topology so I can use Z modeler to add some thickness to this. Uh, so to do this, I'm gonna go to geometry. I'm gonna switch this to like 0.5, super low. Turn adapt off. Uh, I want active symmetry because there's two of them. I'll just do two of them at the same time. And uh, let's just do uh, Z remesh. Um, I'm gonna undo that because I don't like the way uh, the topology is running. Can I control uh, the edges of the of the low poly um, uh, flow, right? Well, what's the way to do that? So I can jump out of the perspective view, go into a flat view, and then let, let me do a control and a, I'll make a selection like this. Then I'll do control uh, W to change the poly group. And now uh, check this out. If I go back to Z remesher, but this time I'll say keep groups, right? I'll leave this uh, still on 0.5, but because keep groups is on, and now we have two groups, we're telling ZBrush that to run the edge flow uh, this way instead of like, you know, this way. So now if I do Z, Z remesh, you can see that the edge flow is very, very different. And essentially that's what I want. So I could do control W. I don't really need multiple poly groups. But I, would, I just wanted to show you the way how you can control the uh, edges when you're uh, doing Z remesher, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, so let's let's see. So what's next? Next, we need to uh, let's actually delete some of this inside topology, and then we'll just extrude it, right? So to do this, I'm going to go to Z modeler. Let's hover over a face, go to delete, and I'm going to delete poly loop, and I'm just going to click on like these here. I don't need any of this here, right? Now to add thickness to this, I'm gonna go to, uh, let's go to extrude. We'll do polygroup all, right? We want all of them. We'll just grab a face and just start pulling out. And you can see how we're just creating this thickness uh, to our eyelids very quickly, right? And something like that is perfect. You can decide if you wanna delete the inner part uh, no one's gonna see that. If you did wanna delete it, just do Control Shift and click to select it, and then do Control Shift and click again, and that's gonna get, uh, it's gonna hide it, and then if you do Delete Hidden, that's gonna delete uh, all of that extra uh, topology, right? You can turn double on if you wanna see what that looks like. But anyway, so I'm gonna go back into Subtool, do Shift Click to unhide everything, and now we have these really nice looking eyelids all right so now we can just grab the move brush and let's just start moving this down uh, i don't want to move the top let me just mask this for a second but these could be like this right and uh, let's flip the mask to control and click and this could be maybe you know we can decide if there's like a little uh angle here right so something like that i think is pretty cool and voila now I'm going to control and shift and click control D and now wait before I do control D I actually want to hold these edges so to do that I'm going to go to geometry let me go to crease and I'm going to click on this button here crease borders that's going to hold this edge so if I do control D uh, a few times right you can see that my edges are being held uh, in position so that actually is what I want right and that's pretty perfect uh, I can decide if maybe five is too much. I'm gonna just go to subdivision level four and delete lower. I don't really need the lower yet. All right, very cool. So now I have uh, this. This is pretty cool. Uh, that's gonna be our eyelids. If we wanna create like a little um, illusion for the eyes, let's do Alt click to select the eyes. And let's do Control uh, D to subdivide it. I'll do it a couple times. And now to create like a placeholder uh, pupil, let me just go to standard. I'll do drag. Uh, let's grab this here, alpha 26, and I'm gonna switch it to add. 
and now if I drag it you can see what that looks like it's gonna create like this kind of a almost eye looking pupil thing that uh, will totally work for like a placeholder right I think that's pretty cool uh, we can also of course change it to like alpha 6 and do a sub and just do like another one right here and then just press one a couple times if you want to make it just a little bit deeper so it's a little more meaningful as far as the eyes go and uh just just totally playing around right but as a sculpture i think that makes sense from especially if you're further away <laughs> all right so that's uh that's pretty cool let's keep going i'm gonna go back to the face here and let me switch this to 512 so i'm gonna give myself more resolution and do control and drag and now i'm at 1 million points i can polish this surface so it looks a little bit smoother and now we can uh, slowly get more into um, you know more into skin detail right uh, let me grab something like the build up again and let's decide if we want these brows to maybe go up again I, I want her to almost have like a kind of a kind um, kind look so maybe all of this needs to come up uh, right here So instead of the eyebrows going down, I'm trying to build them up, right? To open her up a little emotionally. So I think that's cool. Let me grab my move and let's just see if I can even raise this, right? Like raise all of this up. Something like this, I think is what I was looking for. And that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Let me do a little more. Let me grab my Damien standard. Maybe there's a line right here. And let's just go over these a little more, make it a little smaller. I think that works. Uh, you can always pinch these two. If you can go to pinch and you can just take this here and just start pinching it. And that's going to create a nice effect of the uh, Damien standard just being blended more into the skin. You can see uh, the difference, right? Very cool. Let's add um, a couple maybe lines to the top of uh, her head. Maybe there's a line, it's, it's a little too strong here. Maybe we'll do something like this. And I'll do, a, a, you know, I'll do three of them. Let's smooth this out. Just trying to age her a little, right? All right, now since we made the resolution a little higher, I can also, let me emphasize this a little more. Press one. And I really want to build this uh, here, this pocket here. So let me work on this right here, right? I want to press this in. I'm going to grab my inflate brush. And we know that this part right here needs to be just a little more inflated uh, towards the end of the mouth, right? And we can also add a little volume here. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit larger. Hold on the old key and just press this in a little more. Okay. All right, if I wanted to emphasize the lips a little more, uh, let me use Damien Standard and I'm gonna switch it to Add. And let me just run this right above the lip to kind of create more, almost like a, uh, a ridge, right? And I can do the same thing here as well. And I think that's going to be uh, important. We can also, uh, let me grab my inflate, go to sub mode, and let's just press uh, this here a little, a little bit. All right. Just kind of uh, getting basic anatomy in there, right? Facial anatomy. Um, I think that I kind of like that. The nose feels a little too simple right here. Let me go to standard. I'll do, um, let's do drag. And let's just add some noise, right? So let's just even get some um, something that we can use almost like a no, nose noise, right? Let me see what that looks like. Um, I'm on sub right now. It's it's way too much intensity. Let me just do like four. Uh, not enough. Let's do nine. So maybe something like that. Maybe she has some nose pores. 
We can also, of course, do add. Um, maybe that's even better. Or we could do both, right? Let's do both. So uh, actually in the middle here, I'm gonna turn off the symmetry. I don't want this to be symmetrical. I think that works. And now let's do, uh, let's try to add, uh, let's try to do sub in addition to add, right? So maybe we can press some in. And for that, actually, I need symmetry on and I'm gonna press this in and maybe just do something like that. I don't know if that's taking it too far or let's just see how that looks. I think I like that. That's, uh, I think it's better than just having a plain nose, especially for a witch, this totally works, right? Um, all right, I'm starting to, f it feels like the um, eyebrows here just need a little something too. I'll just maybe add a couple lines here. I think that's a little bit better. I would like to press this in a little more. All right, a few more things, right? I think she needs eyelashes and the neck is clearly uh, needs a little uh, work as well, right? For the neck, let me go to inflate. Let's just add like a, um, let's add a little volume here like this. And then I'm just gonna grab a pinch and run a pinch right across, just like this. And that's gonna look, make it look a little more like a neck. Um, and I definitely need to add some lines to this as well. Let me just grab my inflate and let's just do some basic uh, basic stuff here, right? So maybe let's run a couple lines here. So we'll do something like that. We can hold on the old key, press maybe this in. Um, make sure we have this bone here, right? And as you're doing uh, this kind of stuff, uh, you know, anatomy stuff, always pull up uh, good references if you can. Uh, that's always very helpful. I always have my um, uh, references from Pure Ref, right? I use that all the time. So, uh, for example, for the back of the character, if I grab my inflate, um, I can add some uh, detail here, right? You can see uh, what I need to do. So I can add, I can build a little more. Uh, here, but I don't think that's gonna matter because I'm actually planning on also adding a hat and probably some hair. So let's just uh, do something like this right here. You can see there's like a division and I can press this part in and build all of this here and then just kind of start pulling it this way, right? All right, awesome. If I wanted to add uh, some kind of uh, eyelashes to this character. How would I do that? I have this UI available on my community tab if you want to grab some of these tools, but we could just use something like even uh, like a hair, you know, like a uh, hair tool, right? Um, if I go to, uh, let me select this here and let me turn off my symmetry, but using this brush right here, the IMM cartoon that I like to use, I can just do something like this. And that right there is pretty much perfect for what I want, right? As far as the um, eyelashes go. So I'm gonna click to bake it in. Let me grab my move brush and make it maybe just a little bit longer, but many different ways you can do this, right? This is just one way. Let's do control D to sub subdivide this so I can bend this a little more and create something that looks a lot like kind of a stylized eyelash, I guess. And right now I just have one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to um, split. I'm gonna do split on mass. That's gonna put it on its own layer, right? And then from here I can do uh, obviously more of them. So if I grab my move brush, um, let's just hold on the control key and make another one. And I'm not really sure how many of these I want. Uh, I think just a few, I don't really want that many. Uh, maybe like even three I think should work, right? So we'll do something like this. And now if I do control, you can see what that looks like. I have these kind of a crazy looking eyelashes. I can grab all of them. Let me center my uh, pivot. And now uh, I could move them in a little more, right? And of course, rotate them. All 
All right, I think that's pretty uh, pretty funny. Uh, and I'm not sure I need more than this. So I'm just gonna duplicate it and flip it across. And now I have it on both sides. Let's go back into our face. And um, all right, see if we like it. I think she is looking pretty. I'm starting to feel like this area right here needs something as well. Let me just go back to this real quick. And let's do a sub. And let's just add a little noise here um, as well, just a little bit. And we can even change the intensity so it's not so strong. But uh, it felt like it needs something here. We can decide if we want to add something on the head as well. Maybe just really dial this down a lot um, to like, let's do like five and just add a little noise. I know that this right here is going to be under a hat, so it doesn't really matter, but I just want to add something. Um, all right, very cool. Holding down the old key, you can also also flip it and just, you can see how I'm adding just kind of a cartoon, cartoon looking uh, noise to it, right? Uh, very cool, so now uh, next, uh, let's see, what else can we do? I think she is ready for uh, her hat, unless you guys think she needs a little skull uh, earrings, that would be pretty cool. How do we do that? Would be a quick way to add little uh, skull uh, earrings uh, to this lady. I think what I could do is uh, I could just go back here and literally just draw them. Uh, I'm just going to draw one. Um, I know this is an insane way of doing it, but why not? I just want to keep showing you guys that there's really no rules with ZBrush. I'm going to press Control key. Um, I have Mass Pen selected in my Quick Pick. And now what I can do is let's just uh, draw a cartoon uh, skull, right? And something that is super simple. I'm just going to draw a, uh, you know, a shape like this, right? That's going to be kind of the head. And then maybe let's round this up here. Okay. I'm going to color this in. And now I have a, a shape that looks a lot like the top of the skull, right? Like I have this is round. And then this is round. Th these are the cheeks. This is going to be the top of the head. And, you know. Right here, we need some teeth, right? So we'll do uh, something like this. Maybe three teeth, right? So we have, these are gonna be our teeth. And we can do a nose. If I do control and alt, I can do like a little triangular, triangular nose. And uh, maybe that's a little too big. Let's just make this a little smaller. And now I can do control and alt and just add some eyes, right? And you know, somewhat, it looks a lot like some kind of a skull. And that I think that would be pretty perfect for like an earring. What do you think? I think it will work. So let's try this. And now all we need to do is just literally just extract this into a... Uh, and I can flatten this to holding down the old key, right? Maybe I can just do some something like this. Now to extract this... Uh, all I need to do is just go to extract and let's just turn the um, smoothness all the way down and just do extract. And that's going to give us a shape like this. All right, so let me make this a lot larger so I can see what that looks like. Um, and uh, I think I like it. I think it's pretty good. If you wanted to, you can do, of course, do a couple uh, touch ups. We can also turn it into a Dynamash so we can see it a little bit better. And uh, again, if you want to clean some uh, some of this up, uh, we could do that just very quickly, right? It's going to be an earring, so it's not going to be very large. But um, we could do some quick touch-ups here. Maybe just change the nose a little more, and see if you know see if that's maybe a little better. If you want the nose larger or smaller, uh, could make sure the eyes look nice. Um, and you know any touch-ups you want just do that real quick all right and then once uh once it's done you can try to zero mesh it if you want uh if not you can make it much smaller and just put it into position let's just make this into something that looks a lot like an earring i'm just gonna go my top view once you get into position you can also uh use the move brush right 
you can always move it a little bit if you need it to get it into better position and again do any final uh, touch-ups maybe you know for whatever reason maybe I want my teeth to be a little longer I could still do that right it's very easy to do and uh, now what I could do is just flip it to the other side so I'm gonna go to geometry and I can do let's do a mirror mirror and weld and now we have two of them all right so I think our witch is coming along really nice I think uh, she is definitely a lot of fun and uh, before we do any hair we can decide if we want to do hair or the hat. Uh, what should be next? Um, I think we probably should uh, add some hair next. I think that would probably be the easiest. Um, how do you do that? Make sure you save your, if you're following me along, make sure you save your tool. Um, and to do the hair, all we need to do, let's just use, um, we can decide if we want to use um, a string hair or if I want to use um, uh, you know, if you want to use fiber mesh, it's totally up to you. I'm going to go up here and again, you can download this, um, all these brushes and the UI and my community tab. Just come to use, there's a thousand hair brushes. I'm just going to use this one. Essentially what this allows you to do is just um, drag a line and it's going to turn it into like a low poly, uh, you know, low, low poly hair, right? And then you can drag it and you can do stuff with it. So let's say I like something like this right I'm gonna click to commit to it and then I'm gonna go to split and do split on mass and essentially now I can take this strand and just duplicate it a few times to you know to make it a little more um, look like there's more volume you can also turn dynamic on if you want to make it uh, look a little bit nicer but now you can move this around and create some something that looks a lot like cartoon hair right um, I don't think we need to worry about this being too stylistically important because obviously a she's a witch and B she's gonna have a hat right so uh, let's just do this very quickly so I'm just gonna uh, duplicate this and now I can just move this around and create like another one next to it and duplicate it again and very quickly you could see how you know just after a few minutes you can turn something um, you know, that looks a lot like hair, right? You can move this in, move this out, and holding down the old key, right, you can just click on it. You can also create a little waves by using the spiral. If you make the brush a little bit larger, you can create cool spirals in, in, in here and create maybe a little more, you know, variation and movement, uh, which is also very easy to do. And you can do that. Let's say, uh, I'll add more in a minute. Let me just uh, not get stuck on the hair and then I can do more, you know, once we do the hat. Let's, so let me take this and I'm just gonna merge this together. I'm gonna merge this down into one layer and let me just simply uh, flip it. And now I have it on both sides. I wanna make sure I don't cover these earrings, right? Cause we um, worked hard on those so I think that's important that we don't cover them. So maybe I can move this out a little more. Okay. <laughs> She's making me uh, laugh. All right, let's just do something like this. And all right, so that looks pretty fun. Uh, next, how do we do a hat? What would be an easy way to flop down, uh, pl uh, plop down a hat? for our witch. Let's do insert. I think I'm gonna use a uh, cone, right? Cause this already looks like a great starting point for, uh, for a hat. So I'm gonna move this up and put it into position and we can just decide, you know, how we want our hat to fit or look, probably angle it a little more. So something like this, right? Uh, very cool. Now I want to, um, let me turn this on and now let's do this. Let's extract this here, this whole um, poly loop out as a, um, you know, as kind of a, the sides of the head, right? So to do this, I'm going to go to Z modeler. Uh, let's hover over this. Let's go to extrude. We'll do poly loop and let's just pull this out. Uh, something like that. Now, obviously uh, I don't want it to be up like that. So I'm going to go to move. I'm just going to move this down. And I am uh, 
fine with moving it down individually like this. I'll tell you why, because I want to create um, almost like a organic feel to the hat. So I'm okay with this being somewhat uneven, right? I'm doing that kind of on purpose. But um, very quickly, you can see that I created something that can easily be used as a, uh, you know, as some kind of a witch hat, right? One of the other things that I need is uh, I probably want a lot more height here. So let's just pull this up and, you know, just mess this up a little more. Like I'm okay with messing all this up and let's do something like that. We can even make it, you know, somewhat uneven. And now we have kind of a, think of this as like a base mesh for, for the hat, right? I think that's pretty cool. Um, we can decide if we want to push that in or not. I think, uh, I think it's fine. We'll just leave it like this. Now I, I do need more, uh, geometry. So I'm going to do control D to subdivide it and I can jump out of the, uh, polyframe, right? And now what I would like to do is a couple of different things. One, I, I, honestly, I would like this to be uh, a little thicker, right? I don't have enough thickness here. So let's bevel this. I'm going to go to Z modeler. I'm going to hover over this edge here. I'm going to go to bevel. Let's do edge loop complete. And let's just literally uh, bevel all of this. And it's not going to let us because we have subdivision levels. So we need to go to geometry and let's just delete lower and let's just bevel this here. And by doing that, it's going to give us that nice uh, thickness. All right, if I inflate this whole thing, that's going to give me even more uh, volume, which I like, right? So now my head is kind of thick and uh, all of that works really well. I can also polish this and start creating some of that nice bend in there. And I'm doing that on purpose. I kind of want the head to be nice and nice and thick, right? And uh, if you wanted to maintain the top, remember, you can always turn on your curve and just kind of could easily be uh, super pointy right if that's something you like um, now a couple things I want to before we add more um, detail to the hat right let's just get it to maybe look or fit a little bit nicer so I'm gonna go back into my perspective view all right so next let's do this let's go to uh, crease we'll crease our borders and then we'll do control D to subdivide this enough times until it doesn't look facety and I'm just gonna delete um, lower. And now I really want a lot of geometry in here to add creases and folds and all the fun stuff. So I'm gonna turn this into Dynamesh or uh, clay, right? So I'm gonna go to, let's go to 512 and do Dynamesh. And that's gonna give us a lot of geometry. I'm uh, well over a million and that's okay. Like I want this to be uh, super heavy so I can do crazy, crazy stuff with it, right? I have a lot of freedom now. So I'm gonna make my move really, really large and just kind of start shaping, oh, let me turn AccuCurve off. I'm gonna start shaping this hat um, using the brush kind of large to what I think would make sense as far as like uh, her hat, right? So maybe this part of the hat could be up, this could be, you know, a little bit lower. Just totally having fun. Um, and on the back, I think in the back of the character should probably come down a lot and we can add more uh, more hairs there as well right but all of this should come down I want to make sure that the, her head doesn't stick through the head so we can always adjust that and very quickly you can make something that looks a lot like a cool uh, witch hat right if you wanted to um, create more movement here just go to uh, spiral make it super large and literally just do something like this, right? Just create like crazy. Uh, holding down the old key, you can go the other way and just make, um, you know, a lot of really interesting movements that feel uh, very dynamic and interesting. If I wanted to bend this, let's say I want to bend this a little more. Maybe I don't want it to be straight up like that. I can always go to move, go to uh, gear, go to bend curve. And now, um, you know, let's just do something like this, and now we can start bending this. All right, let's say I like this. I'm gonna go to uh, accept, and now I have something along these lines. Uh, very cool, I can also grab my move brush, and maybe, you know, 
I could keep squishing it and essentially I'm breaking that cone, the, the initial cone and making it feel a little more old and worn, right? Kind of uh, whimsical. Uh, so I think that works really well. And now if you wanted to add uh, folds on my UI here, um, I have this CG fold that I like to use, uh, which is great for this kind of stuff. Um, you can just start very quickly just creating uh, folds um, on this on this head and because we have so much topology right this is just going to be really easy to do we can even turn on lazy mouse and just do something like this holding down the old key we can press stuff in and i don't think there's no exact rules for this you can uh, look up a reference but essentially just i'm going to emphasize parts of the uh, hat that you know that makes sense as far as the flow goes so like this can go like this. All right, so once you are happy, um, I think that's pretty much it. The only other thing I would do uh, to this character is definitely add more uh, hair, right? And again, maybe we can just utilize something that's already here. So I can always duplicate this, grab my move brush, and I'm just kind of trying to do it somewhat fast, but. Uh, you can do something like this. You can flip this over, right? We can flip it on, um, let's flip it on Z. Just flip this over the other way. So now the hair is facing the other way. Now if I move this into position, I can just kind of cheat. And, you know, instead of starting from uh, zero, right? I can start using this to kind of get it into a better position using the move brush. So I do have active symmetry turned on. And just very quickly, I can start um, moving these around and making it fit on the back of the character, right? All right, you guys, I think this is as far as I'm going to take it. Um, I hope you made something amazing on your end. Uh, this was so much uh, fun to uh, create. And uh, if you want to, uh, in the next video, we can maybe continue, uh, get her, um, give her a body, maybe get her sitting on the broom. But um, I think this is uh, long enough for, uh, for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in our next one.